Hi everybody and welcome back to Tales of Wanderlust. I'm Cass, Jasper is actually ready to go for a walk, not do a video, but today I am gonna do a review of my Gobi roof rack and the Thule cargo carrier. So if you're interested, stay tuned. So let's start with why I got the Thule. When I originally bought the Thule, I didn't use the trunk in the Forerunner. The reason is I had the entire back of the Forerunner built out so I could have a twin size mattress back there and sleep in the back. So I needed some sort of storage in the Forerunner and I really wanted it to lock and be secure. So that's why I ended up going with a rooftop cargo carrier. I store all of my dirty gear up there. So wheel chocks, my outdoor rug, the leveling blocks, different things like that so I can keep the dirt out of the inside of the Forerunner, outside of the Airstream, and put it all up in that Thule. So why did I end up going with the Thule over any of the other brands out there? I researched Thule and Yakima extensively, and really in the end, they're basically the same, in what I could find at least. So I really didn't have a major preference either way. The Thule is made here in the US. They use solar power for part of their operation, and so I thought, hey, why not? I'm gonna support that and I purchased the Thule. It has held up really well to regular use, but this is actually my second Thule. So when I first got the, I got the Alpine version, which is much more narrow. So it only took up half the Gobi rack. The reason I did that is I really thought I was going to eventually put a boat on one side, which I ended up not doing. Really loved it, it gave me enough storage. And then I took the Toyota in for an oil change and they were nice enough to run my truck through the car wash. So it was completely cracked, it was no longer weatherproof and you actually couldn't even close it anymore. So when they ended up deciding to replace it, they asked me which one I wanted because the Alpine that I originally had Thule no longer makes. And since I didn't have the boat that I had originally wanted, I ended up going for the larger full-size Thule. So you can see it takes up most of the roof space. It definitely has a lot more cargo capacity than the old one, and I've never actually filled this up to capacity. So overall, tons of storage space. How does the Thule hold up in general? As long as you don't take it through the car wash really well but it does have its little quirks. So when you open it and you close it, it is a little finicky. You gotta make sure that it comes down straight. You have to make sure there's nothing actually in the way of the latch system to lock it and close it. But overall, it has held up really well, minus the car wash, and I would definitely recommend the Thule. Thule's can be pretty expensive, so it is a little cost prohibitive in order to buy them, but when I bought mine, I ended up getting it on an Amazon warehouse deal. So on Amazon, if you scroll down on some products, you'll see a new and used from price and you can get into their warehouse deals from there. So if somebody buys something, they don't like it and they return it. And especially if the packaging is damaged, it goes into the warehouse and it becomes cheaper. So I got about 25% off my first Thule by doing that. And it also ships free directly to my door. So if you can find a warehouse deal, definitely recommend doing it. As far as installation goes, I actually installed my first one and the second one myself. The Thule's are extremely light, so I can even lift it just up on the roof by myself. You can kind of skirt the front up and then the back if you really needed to. It's very easy to install and take off. Inside, there are just these little twists brackets in order to clamp it down onto the roof rack. All right, it is really cold outside, so I am moving inside. My hand is actually so cold I can barely move it. Now that you know about the Thule, let's talk about the Gobi roof rack that I have. In order to put the Thule on the roof, I needed some sort of crossbars. I could have just gotten crossbars for the stock Forerunner rack, but I really loved the look of a full roof rack. And I wanted that look as well as the additional storage capacity that a full roof rack gives. So I did a lot of searching around on the internet. There are a ton of different options, but I ended up landing on getting the Gobi Stealth roof rack. There were a few reasons for the Gobi roof rack. First, I envisioned myself going up on the roof, laying on the rack, enjoying the stars or sitting up there eating a picnic, checking out amazing views. I can tell you that never came to fruition. There have only been two times somebody has stood on my roof rack. 
One was when I was camping with my friend in the Grand Tetons. She stood on top of the roof rack so she could get over the bushes and get a good picture of the Tetons. The second time I was actually on the roof and the reason was I needed to clean the solar panels on the Airstream Base Camp. I thought I could fold in my mirrors and drive the Forerunner up really close to the base camp and reach over and clean the rooftop solar panels but that did not work. So I crawled up the ladder in the back, I sat on the roof, I tried to reach over, but it still wasn't close enough. So that's the only time I've ever actually stood on the roof. When I was searching, I really wanted a rack that was strong. The Gobi can hold 800 pounds static. So for those rooftop picnics, it would have been great. And it holds about 300 pounds when you're driving, which is plenty for the Thule and everything I have in there. When I had the smaller Thule box and my family came to visit, we would mount skis over on the other side it's very versatile and it's easy to tie things down to. I've had long pieces of wood strapped up to there and a variety of different items. When I ordered it back in 2018, there was a 12 to 14 week lead time on the Gobi. So that caused a lot of logistical issues since I was living on the road full time. So at that point, I knew I was gonna be driving back to my family's house and I was going to be spending about a month there. The 12 to 14 weeks, you always know it could go a little bit longer than that. So I ordered it where that 14 weeks would fall right at the beginning of my time with my family and I hoped they wouldn't be too late. The rack does come as one whole piece so it does ship via freight. It is very heavy. It comes on a pallet so it's not easy to ship just anywhere so you really do have to have a residence or a business in order to ship it to. So the mailing services that I normally use wouldn't work either. It's also a two-person job to install this thing. The Gobi comes with all the proper instructions on how to take off the stock roof rack, how to line up the Gobi, be, how to install it. We did have one screw that cross threaded. It caused a whole issue. It took about a day to drill it out, find the right screw replacement at the hardware store. That was the only hiccup installing it. Otherwise it really wasn't too bad to do, but it was definitely a two person job. I will say when I was ordering the roof rack, the customer service was not very helpful. If I reached out to them trying to find a status on the order, they really couldn't give me too much information. It really wasn't the best customer service experience, but in the end, the product is so good, I've never had to go back and try to get the customer service. Really an amazing rack. I absolutely love having it. Even if I didn't travel full time, I would still probably have a Gobi roof rack, but I am switching to a Tundra so I cannot take the rack with me. And then it also comes down to price. So the Gobi roof rack is about $1,600. It is one of the more expensive racks out there, if not the most expensive when I was researching them about three years ago. But to me, the quality is definitely worth it. I can't really speak to any of the other racks out there because I haven't had them but I can tell you the Gobi has held up. I'm also about to sell the Gobi to somebody else. I'm selling it for $1,100 so it cost me 500 bucks for three years worth of having a Gobi rack. And I can tell you when I posted it for sale there were a lot of people that wanted it. So selling it when you go to sell your truck is definitely something you can do and kind of recoup some of those costs. The Gobi roof rack also comes with the little ladder that goes on the back. It is needed in order to climb up onto the roof rack if you are going to get yourself fully up there. I personally love the ladder just because it carries my trash -aroo. Actually, I used to have a trash -aroo. It made it about two years and then it completely fell apart. So now I have a generic version because trash -aroo has been sold out for a long time. But whatever trash bag you have, the ladder on the back of the Forerunner is awesome to attach that to. For me, I don't have a truck or anything where I can store garbage outside. So if I'm camping for a long period of time and I have dog poop that I've picked up, it's nice to put it in that trash bag outside and not have it inside the Forerunner and stinking things up. So overall, how have the Gobi and the Thule held up to life on the road? extremely well. They've gone about 80,000 miles with me back and forth across the country, through high winds, off road, through Moab, all over the place. And they are both holding up really well. The only thing that has taken out the Thule is a car wash. So if you've got one on your roof, 
don't go through the car wash. But overall, I am extremely happy with them. I never really used the Gobi to its full capacity. I could have easily gone with crossbars or something else, but it looks really nice and I enjoyed having it. The Thule was indispensable. I constantly have things stored up there. It is always full. So how does my rooftop setup impact gas mileage? The problem is I did the rooftop setup and the full suspension upgrade and the three inch lift with the larger tires all around the same time. So with all of those modifications, I get about 14 miles to the gallon combined with the Forerunner. If you're driving in normal conditions, there's really no extra sound that comes off the Gobi or the Thule either. I don't really notice it's up there. I can't hear it. But if I'm driving through high winds or really high gusts, I can definitely feel it and hear it. So in gusts of wind, it acts like a sail. And when I'm hit broadside, I really need to hold onto the steering wheel because I can feel that Thule really helping push me around. Then if there's a constant high wind, you're gonna hear it in the roof rack. So it is kind of like a whistling, whooshing sound. It's not anything so crazy that it's obnoxious that you can't get through it. And I don't drive in high winds very often, but you definitely get the extra sound when it's windy. I have had a cold for a couple weeks, so I am now losing my voice because I have been talking too much. But if you guys have any questions on either of them, feel free to comment below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching everybody and we'll see you next time.